In this particular video, we're going to look at not so much gene sequencing, but about how databases are being used. In this 2014 syllabus, there's a lot of little application kind of statements that show up throughout the syllabus where they're really trying to emphasize this idea of how scientists can share information with each other and how we can use bioinformatics or a lot of data that's available to us to help us to find patterns, deduce relationships between organisms, figure out evolutionary histories, help to figure out differences between organisms, of, especially because all living things share the same genetic code, we can see how the gene for a particular protein, for example, hemoglobin, how it actually differs from human to a chimpanzee to a pig, for example, or a frog. And as a result of this, we can find out lots of information about our evolutionary past, hopefully to help us be able to figure out our evolutionary future as well too. So databases, you know what databases are, they're places that you store lots and lots of information. And in biology, a lot of that information can be DNA base sequence data. So people have sequenced the human genome, we've sequenced the earthworm genome, the fly genome, frog genomes. And we've also figured out that a lot of this information we actually don't know what it's all about. There's just a bunch of letters, A's, T's, C's, and G's. And what can we do with all of that information? So not any single scientist or any single research institute is going to be able to do all this work. So if you make this data available to everybody, people can easily search, share, use it, and access it, and try and find patterns, and then share their findings with each other. So a little bit of review here. When you're talking about a gene, you're really talking about a specific segment of a particular chromosome. And if you stretch it all out, you'll basically see the actual chemical composition, which we were, it's just DNA. So there's going to be A's, T's, C's, and G's. That's what we're most interested in, is knowing the particular letter sequences. And it's so weird to think about how just four letters, A, T, C, and G, can be arranged in different ways to produce everything that you see on this earth in terms of living organisms, plants, bacteria, me, my evil twin, you know, everything that's out there uh, is coded for by these four letters. And just the way that we mix them up makes all the differences in all the life that's out there. That's ridiculous. So the locus, a locus means the actual location of a particular gene. That's not too hard to remember. Locus is a single location. If I talk about gene loci, then I'm talking about multiple different locations of where genes are. So the rest of this is kind of just a list of different databases that you can actually use and access and what you might be able to find from them. So there's something called the OMIM, which is the Online Mendelian Inheritance in Man uh, gene map. If you choose that, you can search for these genes and it gives you information about that gene, where it's located, and what that gene actually codes for. So you can see the names of these genes are not really creative, but we need to kind of set it up so it's like a library, right? You can't just make up things. We have a limited number of elements in the periodic table. People right now are trying to figure out what to name these four newly discovered heavy elements. I even heard Donald Trump was suggested as one, Donald Trumpium. But for the number of genes that are out there, it's not going to work. No one's going to remember this stuff. So you need to be able to sequence it and figure it out kind of library style. So 17 probably tells me that this is chromosome number 17. I already mentioned this. If you are comparing base sequences, we can find out how long ago they actually diverged. So anybody who is doing evolution right now, or you've already studied evolution, you should be able to understand what this actually means. The gen bank is another place that you can go to figure out differences between base sequences. Uh, you can use BLAST, which is another system to find similar sequences. You could use Cluster 9 to compare sequences with other genes. So a lot of different systems exist to help you to be able to analyze all the data. And when you look at it, it's pretty scary looking. So computing power, people, get your new I don't know, MacBook. I don't know if that's strong enough. Yeah, it'll be good. You can you can actually use this for setting up a research-based IA or an extended essay. Most people tend to want to go the experimental route. And so you design a photosynthesis experiment or a transpiration experiment or an enzyme experiment. Why don't you try to use this? Ask a particular question. Think about what you've been studying in evolution. Think about what you've been studying in genetics and understanding what 
kind of data is available to you, go and investigate some of this stuff and then see if you can turn this into a research question where you can ask about different populations, um, groups of people who have drifted off and have lived in small isolated populations. Will they have higher allele frequencies? That would involve even other types of databases as well too. Proteins can be found in databases as well too. Lots of stuff to be looking at in biology. A lot of exciting stuff for the future of biology and medicine.